So we know what cells are, and we know that they're microscopic. But the question is, why are cells so small? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And we're going to cover something called surface area to volume ratio, because that's actually really important, and it's the reason why cells are so small. So let's have a look. But before we begin, I've actually been doing a bit of experimenting with my TV remote. I'm just gonna have a go at the fast forward button here and just see if something happens. Well, that worked. Good grief. Now, where were we? What were we talking about? Um, 30 years ago. That's right. Remember, we were talking about cells. And why are cells so small? Well, one of the things we need to understand is that cells have to take in things from their surroundings. They need materials. We could call them nutrients, I suppose, like food, oxygen. They also need to get rid of things, so things have to leave cells. Uh, wastes. If they didn't get rid of wastes, then they'd be poisoned and die. So I wonder if we can think about that and use those ideas to work out why cells are so small. To do that, we need to think about surface area and volume, these two concepts. So what is meant by surface area? Well, we can maybe illustrate that with a simple object, like a loaf of bread. The surface area of a loaf of bread is really the crust. And we can see that the loaf of bread has got six surfaces. It's got two ends, two sides, a top and a bottom. And we would measure the surface area in square centimetres, or centimetres squared if you prefer. The volume of the bread, on the other hand, is how much space does it take up? And we would measure that in centimetres cubed, or cubic centimetres. Let's put our loaf of bread to one side for a moment, and let's get rid of all these crumbs. Goodness me. We're going to explore this surface area and volume idea uh, by looking at three different sized cubes. You can see them here. We've got a large one, three centimetres, a medium sized one, two centimetres, and a one centimetre sized cube, a small cube. Let's look at these cubes one at a time, beginning with the three centimetre cube. So remembering our loaf of bread, remember it had six surfaces, this cube also has six surfaces. Each one of them is three centimetres by three centimetres. So the area of one of these sides is three by three, or nine centimetres squared. But because there are six of those sides, we have to multiply that by six to get the total surface area for the whole cube. And of course, nine by six is 54. So 54 centimetres squared is the surface area of this large cube. Now let's consider the volume of the cube. The volume is how much space it takes up. It's length times breadth times depth, which for this cube is three by three by three. In a way, it's a much simpler calculation. Three by three by three is 27. And of course, that's 27 centimeters cubed. So we could say the surface area to volume ratio of this three centimeter cube is 54 to 27, which cancels down to two to one. Two times 27 is 54. So let's hold that thought for a minute. Large cube, surface area to volume ratio of two to one. Now let's do the same calculation for our two centimeter cube beginning with the surface area. And remember, there are six sides. Now for this one, each surface is two by two, which is four centimeters squared, but there are six of them. So we have to multiply that by six and four by six is 24. 
So it's 24 square centimetres or 24 centimetres squared. And the volume of this two centimetre cube is two by two by two, length times breadth times depth. Two two is a four times two is eight. So we've got eight cubic centimetres or eight centimetres cubed for the volume. So the surface area to volume ratio for this two centimetre cube is 24 to eight, which cancels down to three to one. Do you remember the large cube was two to one? This cube, a little bit smaller, its ratio is three to one. What happens if we look at the smallest cube in our examples, the one centimetre cube? Okay, so let's work out the surface area of our one centimetre cube. And remember, it's one by one for each of the sides. There are six sides. Hopefully you're getting used to that by now. We multiply by six and that gives us our total surface area of six centimetres squared. Remember, volume is length times breadth times depth. For this cube, that is one times one times one, which is one centimetre cubed. So this time we have a surface area to volume ratio of six to one. No need to cancel. How did that go again? Six to one for this. What were the others? Let's remind ourselves. How's your memory? The large cube had a ratio of two to one surface area to volume. The medium sized cube had a ratio of three to one surface area to volume. And the smallest cube, its surface area to volume ratio is six to one. So the cube with the greatest surface area compared to its volume is in fact the smallest cube. Now, how is that important for cells? Remember we said earlier that cells have to take in things from their surroundings through their surface and they have to get rid of materials to their surroundings through their surface. Which one of these cubes will be most efficient at doing that? Surely you can see it's the one that has the greatest surface area to volume ratio. And of course, that is the smallest of the three cubes. So it seems the rule is that the smaller an object is, the larger is its surface area to volume ratio. Don't be fooled. This one, the one centimeter cube, has a smaller volume than the others, but its surface area compared to its volume is greater. And that could be a reason why cells are so small. There is another way to look at this though, and we can do that by going back to our loaf of bread. Now remember with our loaf of bread, we said that the crust or outside represents the surface area. So as we said before, two ends, two sides, a top and a bottom. The volume of the bread on the other hand is how much space it takes up much room and remember that is measured in cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed. What happens if we cut this bread in half? Let's have a look and see. What's happened to its volume? Well, it's the same, isn't it? It's just taking up the same amount of space that it did before. But if we separate the two halves like this, now it still takes up the same amount of space, right, as it did before, but it has two new surfaces that it did not have before. So effectively, what we've done is we've got the same volume, but more surface area by making it smaller. And I'm not going to do this, but we could keep cutting. We could cut it up into smaller pieces and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. And every time we did that, we would be creating more surface area, but no more volume. It would still be the same amount of bread. So what does this mean for us? It means that 
if we have smaller objects making up a volume, the surface area in total is greater. And that's really important for living things, and it's really important for cells. And it even helps us understand why larger living things, like, say, us, for example, contain trillions of cells that are really tiny. Because what that means is those cells can each individually get their requirements and get rid of their wastes very efficiently. So it's all about efficiency of exchange, and that's why cells are so small. Another thing that can affect the surface area to volume ratio of a cell is its shape. And you've probably seen before a red blood cell, which we have here, an example. Um, it's called a biconcave disc, its shape. And by having that biconcave disc shape, that increases its surface area to volume ratio even more. So it's got smallness to increase its surface area to volume ratio and a special shape. We also know that there are some cells that have little microvilli on their surface where the membrane is highly folded, which once again increases the surface area to volume ratio. Surface area to volume ratio is a concept that you'll come up against many times as you study biology. Well, it was very interesting looking at things 30 years in the future, but I'm feeling a little bit old and kind of wish I was back 30 years younger again. I wonder if this thing works in reverse. Let's give it a try. Oh, phew. Uh, oh, that was fun. Um, not sure I'll do that again. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.